Hi there. Uh, in this video, we'll be covering how to engage with to-do list issues on the Ivy repository. Um, and essentially, just to explain, um, a to-do list issue is essentially an issue which contains many subtasks, which themselves are um, all related to this uh, list, um, but are each um, requiring unique pull requests and unique implementations in order to solve the tasks. Um, so it's essentially a way of grouping a list of tasks together, which all need doing, and also tracking who is working on the task. Um, this will all become clearer when I um, show you. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Um, so first of all, I'll create a new, um, from my own account, I'll create a new to-do list issue just to show you what they generally look like and also how they're created. Um, so I'll go new issue here. Um, I'll call this just to make it clear, uh, dummy to-do list. And essentially um, we use this feature here, which is to add a task list. Um, you can also do this manually actually, because it's just essentially like this, but um, we can use this feature as well. Um, and then essentially um, some task and then we have another, another task. Um, and then finally we have even another task. And then what this looks like is this, this kind of checklist where once you've created it, you can then engage with the, um, you can then check and uncheck each of the items. So this is the to-do list. What will then happen is this will be assigned the label to do, just so we can group all of these together. Okay, so then this is the task. And you can see here that actually, well, administrators of the account are then able to check and uncheck these, but you as a external contributor, you, you're not able to actually engage with this and modify the to-do list. Um, so the process we have um, for you claiming one of these and then making a pull request and finally getting it accepted. Um, I'll go through this whole process now. Um, so first of all, I'll actually just open another window which then will be representing you as a contributor. So um, we'll need to first find it to GitHub using our dummy account. Um, so let's go to GitHub. Um, let's um, sign in, um, and this is foo.barrymore at gmail.com. Oh, okay, well, just give me a moment. Okay, um, so I've just got my code verifying, okay. Um, so yeah, so what are we doing? So we're gonna go onto the dummy issue um, here. And then essentially the process for um, engaging with this to-do list looks like the following. So we first um, choose a task to work on. We then copy the name exactly as it appears in the to-do list. Um, and then we create a new issue. And the reason we're creating a new issue is essentially to reserve this task for ourselves. So we want to flag to others in the community. I actually would quite like to work on some task. So in order to reserve this, I do the following. I create an issue with this exact title. Um, I create this issue. Um, and what I then do is, um, in the original, so this is four to eight, I remember this number, or you can copy it. Um, we then go back here and we write a comment, which essentially, um, well actually we can just do this before I was doing this, but I mean, I don't think that's necessary. Um, yeah, so I mean, either's fine, it doesn't matter, it's pretty simple still, but actually you can just put a comment like this um, and then you comment it like this. And then what will happen is um, not immediately, um, but eventually, automatically, this will then be brought into here. 
Um, currently we're doing this process manually. Very soon we will have a GitHub action that does this autonomously, so we don't need to um, manually intervene at all. But essentially what then will happen at some point is um, this will be updated to 428. Um, this will be updated like this. And then it, this will now reference your issue and your comment will be deleted. And then we'll have the following. Um, so this is kind of the first step. Um, but what you then will need to do is um, create a pull request um, and reference uh, this issue in the newly created pull request. Um, so we'll go through this process now as well. Um, and an important point to make here is uh, these will be updated, but um, let's just go uh, into the docs and go to contribute into Ivy. And we have this section here, to-do list issues. And you should regularly check this section or the equivalent section. The name might change a bit, but there'll be some section always explaining the policy for to-do list issues. And generally speaking, there will be some time limit, which means if you... So the reason we want to have a time limit is to prevent the situation where somebody um, reserves a task, they create an issue, and then they have no activity for several weeks. Um, this is fine, this is understandable. Sometimes things come up and you don't have as much time as you thought and you forget, so that's not a problem. But we want to make sure that we are preventing this from happening so that we keep these tasks available to other people in the community who do want to engage in them with them, do want to solve them and can do so in a more near-term basis. Um, so, so basically we have this time limit where if you've reserved an issue and you've created an issue and commented on one of these to-do lists, um, if you have not created a pull request which references the issue within 72, within 72 hours, then we will aut automatically close this issue and we will remove it from the to-do list and essentially free up this task for somebody else to work on. Um, so really you, sh you should only be reserving one of these tasks when you have some like reasonable amount of time in front of you to actually then make a pull request for the task. Um, you could, if you wanted to, only reserve it once you've actually had a bit of a play and implemented it locally, but then you do run the risk of somebody else um, reserving the issue before you. So the best um, pipeline would be reserve the issue, but do so immediately before you're about to start working on the pull request and then make the pull request um, in, the, in the next few days, well, the next two days. Um, so yeah, anyway, so this is the first stage. Um, and then once you've made a pull request, I'll quickly just continue explaining here. Um, similar to the previous videos where we explained the process of um, first you make the pull request, then um, someone in the IV account will respond to your pull request, um, either emerging it or requesting changes. And then from that point forward, you will only get more responses from someone in the IV um, account when you request new um, code, code reviews. Um, so we'll do a code review on any new pull request, request changes most likely, and then you must re-request a code review in order for us to take a, a second look at the pull request. This is the case, as I can go to right here, this is the case even if you haven't made code changes but you want to further the discussion. Essentially, again, quickly as explained in the previous video, we um, find our pipeline first by going through everything with no review, we give a review to all of these, and then after that we look for ones that are awaiting review and these are essentially the only two steps that keep us engaging with pull requests. So you need to request new reviews every time you want us to look at something again after we've request changes. Um, so with that context, um, once you've made a pull request, we then um, have a second um, time limit, which is any time that we request changes, um, you must request another review from us within 72 hours Otherwise, the pull request and the issue will be closed and the task will be deallocated. Um, it's important to emphasize that this is only for pull requests, which essentially link back to something in one of these to-do lists. If you make a pull request in total isolation, then these time limits don't apply, um, yeah, because there's no reason for them to. The only reason we have these time limits is because 
these to-do lists are supposed to be the front-facing engagement, kind of the front-facing um, location for anybody in the community to engage with and try to do something useful. And we want to make sure they can continue to do so without issues becoming stagnated. Okay, I think I've said the same thing many times there. Um, I don't think actually just for the purpose of this video, which is already yeah, over 10 minutes, um, the previous two videos went through in detail the process of creating a pull request. Um, so, so I don't think this is necessary. Um, again, the only thing I would say is um, when you've, um, so you've created this issue, you've made your comment, um, and what you can do right away, you don't have to wait for it to be um, integrated into the to-do list. You can just move straight to the next step, which is to create um, the pull request, um, as soon as you've got some implementation working. Um, it doesn't need to be a full solution. Maybe it's not working, you're stuck, and you can still go ahead and make a pull request, and then we can use the pull request as a location to discuss and iterate on your, your fork of the code. Um, it's a lot easier to do it this way, where we have this shared, um, yeah, shared view of the code rather than trying to discuss in the Discord or something like this. Um, so the only other thing to say is that what you then must do when you create your pull request, um, you must, let's just take this one as an example, um, you must go to development and you must um, find your issue here, either by the number um, or by the name, and you must then link um, your issue to the pull request. Um, and then this will mean in the issue, um, in the issue, you will then see this pull request has issued, has referenced this link. And the benefit here is that, first of all, we can then track the progress um, using these autonomous tools for closing thing, for closing the issue and closing the pull request. Um, if you don't link it, your issue will be closed and it will be reallocated within 72 hours. So it's necessary for you to link the pull request. Um, another benefit is that when the pull request is merged, this automatically closes the issue, which is great, and the closing of the issue automatically ticks the box. So we, we, we merge the pull request, and then this kind of propagates through the pipeline, closes the issue, ticks the box, and this is the best way of doing things. Um, so if you have created a pull request, and then you notice the issue's been closed and it's been reallocated, then probably the mistake was you didn't link the issue in the pull request, which is something very important to do in this development heading inside your pull request. Um, but again, I've talked through details here and I've not done it in code, but I think that's for the best because this video is also already quite long. Um, if you have any questions, please um, reach out in the comments um, on the YouTube video or in the Discord um, directly uh, message me or someone in the team. Um, yeah, hopefully this video was um, useful and explained, explained it well enough. Um, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.